Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Andrew with Wasatch Electronics. Today we are going to be looking at three graphics cards that a friend of mine sent in for repair. The first one that we've got is this Power Color. This is a 6600 XT. All right, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is disassemble this card. And I really like using these magnet pads. This was a large one that I cut up. Get all the screws out of this. I already somewhat know the problem with this card. I've been told that it needs a new 5 volt buck converter. But we're going to double check. Even if I didn't know what was wrong with this card, I would not be powering it on or doing anything else with the card. The first thing I always do is a disassembly because we need to check and make sure that there aren't any shorts on the card. If you just power the card on without checking for any shorts, you could potentially kill the card completely. If not completely, you could blow a few things on the motherboard, like some MOSFETs or a buck converter, an LDO, other various components. All right, let's go ahead and start with a resistance check. So we're going to do 12 volts, 3.3 volts, whatever this is down here. I think this is also 12 volts. It's been a while since I've worked on an AMD card, so I'm going to be a little rusty with these. That's fine. Three and a half kilo ohms. I think this is uh, either memory or the memory controller, 72 ohms, so that's good. And this one's probably the memory controller, 111 ohms, that's more than good. Double check the core. Oh. My reading's a little off here, there we go. Um, yeah, a couple ohms, so that should be good. Let's see, is this one also the core? Yes, that one is also the core. Okay. I'm going to check the... I think this is 12 volts up here. Okay, 5.5 kilo ohms. That should be good. Let's check whatever this guy is right here. 73, 75 ohms, 100 ohms. That's probably all right. I'm actually not 100% sure what that rail is. I'll need to double check that one. And let's see, the 5 volt buck right here. Have, okay, 1.2 kilo ohms on that pin. Um, I think that one's ground, so zero. This is probably the output, 1.23k ohms. And... Uh, I can't remember exactly what this pin is again. I'd have to take a look at this, but yeah, everything's fine. There's no major shorts on this card. So the next thing we can do is move to a power on and see if we're missing any voltage rails. Okay, I don't have the best bench recording set up here, but this will have to do. So I've got everything connected. I've got it powered by a riser and an eight pin cable here. Gonna turn my PSU on, and just in case something blows, I am gonna be ready to switch it off. I've got the power supply switch easily accessible. Um, I don't believe it will, but we'll go ahead and power it on here. And then what I'm gonna do, yep. So let's see, I always put my finger on the core right here. You do have to be careful with like 30 series cards because this will get extremely hot, but there is no heat coming from this. And my riser is powered. I know that this cable is powered, so we should be getting power, but we are not. Let's go ahead and probe all the power rails here and see what we're missing. So we've got 12 volts there. We've got 1.8 volts there. We've got the 750 millivolt rail there. Like I said, I'm kind of rusty. I actually don't remember what that is. We have got, okay, 300 millivolts on that one. I think that's probably not correct, so that might be where we're having an issue. 
I'll show that under the camera in just a second here, under the microscope. We have got nothing on either the memory or the memory controller, probably both of these. Yes, we have no voltage on those, which means we probably have no voltage on core. Yep. And let's see if we have voltage on that converter on the back side. Let's see, we got five volts. Okay, so actually the five volt uh, butt converter is good. Everything looks fine on there. We've got five volts, five volts. I believe that's fine. I'll double check and make sure, but we do have five volts there, so that should be good. So let me jump back over to the microscope and we will take a look at this chip, see if there's anything visually wrong with it or if there's anything missing in that area, and then we can go from there. So now we've got it under the microscope, we can take a look at that 5 volt buck converter. This is where we only have 300 millivolts output is on this inductor right here. So if we take a closer look, we can see that this is GS9230. And these GS components are not super great so i'm not surprised that it's not working correctly it could be a bad component or it could be a bad input or something else going on with it so i have pulled up a pin out of the chip unfortunately the data sheet's not available that would be nice to have but the pin out will do for now so the things we want to check we want to check uh, the enable pin which is going to be pin 2 we want to check the probably feedback, which is going to be pin 5. We'll want to check AN, most likely, which is going to be pin 7. We'll want to check VN, which is going to be 8 and 9. And then we'll want to check, uh, let's see, LX is the output, so we already checked that. We already know we have 300 millivolts there, so we can skip all those. And then we'll want to check boot, VCC, and VN. For now, I'll skip boot, but we'll check VCC and VN. So we'll want to do pins 2, pin 5, pin 7, 8, 9, and 21 and 22. All right, I've managed to pull my power supply and motherboard over a little bit. I guess I need to find a better solution for this in the future. But let's get to checking some pins. I already know that this card is safe to power on. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. We are good. And let's get to checking. So the first pin I'm going to check, we have 300 millivolts out, but that is a weird value. So I'm just going to start with enable, which is pin two. And I'm going to go ahead and check it at the test point over here. And I'm getting zero volts. Okay, that's kind of weird. Let's see, is it being pulled down to ground? Nope, 90 kilo ohms. Okay, so that's a weird issue that we don't have enable, but we have 300 millivolts still. Okay, well, let's move on. Um, in that case, I'm going to check pin 1, which is power okay. I think that's equivalent to P good, maybe. There's nothing on that one. I'll have to double check and look that up. Let's check feedback, which is going to be pin 5. 5, we'll check at this test point. 400 millivolts no sorry 49 millivolts so that's uh that's something that's probably okay given that we have 300 millivolts out for whatever reason let's check a in and v in which is going to be seven and then eight and nine so a in we have 12 volts that's good v in we have 12 volts that's going to be good and next we'll take a look at pins 21 and 22, VCC and VN. So we've got 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, plus 6 is 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. Let's check both of these. So 21, which is VCC, we have 0 volts. That's probably also not right. And 22, we have 12 volts. So VN is good, but we are missing VCC and enable by the looks of it and it's still outputting 300 millivolts so that is a little weird let's see if this is being pulled to ground at all 
BCC. BCC is 55 kilo ohms. Okay, so neither of these are being pulled to ground, but we do not have voltage on them. Let me take a look at the schematic or the board view, and we'll move to the next step. Unfortunately, I don't have the exact schematic for this card, but luckily I do have a schematic and a board view from another card, actually another two cards, that are very close. And this one I'm looking at uses the same GS9230, and it looks like it's got some very similar circuitry. So I probed a bit more and I noticed that the power OK pin, which is pin 1 on that 5 volt buck converter, was being pulled to ground. And I would assume that it's being pulled to ground because the card's not working properly. The VCC pin, uh, which we're also missing 12 volts on, is not being pulled to ground though. That one's 55k ohms, so that one's good. I believe those have a 55k ohm resistor between the two, pin 1 and pin 21, POK and VCC. So that seems fine there. Then I looked at enable again. It, for now, I'm just ignoring the fact that we have 300 odd millivolts out. I'm not 100% sure why, but looking at enable, I noticed that that's not being pulled to ground either. It's sitting at about 90 kilo ohms, if I remember correctly. So I traced it back a little bit. It looks like it connects to this resistor that you can see in the middle of the screen right now. And that is a zero ohm resistor. I confirm that it's zero ohms and there's no voltage on either side. The other side of that resistor is five volt drive enable. So let's go chase down five volt drive enable and see why it's not being output. If we pop open the schematic in the board view here, we can see that here is the GS9230. Here's the enable circuitry, and we can see that it goes to five volt drive enable. Here's that resistor that's on the back side, R650. If I search for five volt drive enable, we can see that there is only one other connection, and it goes to Q1010, and a pull-up resistor, a 100k ohm pull-up resistor that's powered by a 3.3 volt bus. So if it was being pulled to ground, I would be checking right here, see if there's voltage, and see if that was maybe pulling it to ground. But I know it's sitting at around 90 kilo ohms, so it's not. So my ne next suspect is going to be this resistor right here, R1200, and or the 3.3 volt bus. Maybe it's not reaching this point for some reason, or it's not being generated, and something's being skipped over, and the rest of the card, almost, not the rest of the card, but other rails are powering on. So if we jump over to the board view, take a look at R1200. That's going to be in this very bottom corner. So I jumped over to the card itself. And if we take a look at that, there is the pads. There are the pads where R1200 should be. So we are missing R1200. And that is going to be the reason that we don't have enable. Let's start with replacing that. Again, it's a uh, hundred kilo ohms. It's probably an 0402 resistor. I'll grab one from my book, swap that out, and then we'll take a look and see if anything changes. All right, I got that resistor installed and the card connected back up to some power. Let's power it on. And first I'm just gonna check and see if the core gets hot. And it is getting pretty warm, whoops. Let's see, do we have the five volts we need there? We do have that five volts there now, so that's good. And with the core getting warm, I'm gonna see if we really quick have V core. I don't want this card to be turned on for too long. Luckily it doesn't get too hot, but let's also check the, the 670 millivolts, 1.2 volts, and we have core 800 millivolts. Okay, 
let me move back over to the other camera at the test bench and we'll see if we get video output. All right, I got everything hooked up to power. Let's kick on the power supply. I've got the video out connected. This is my third take because I had to fix one of my motherboard settings. And let's see if we have video output. Fire it up and it's getting pretty warm. Getting pretty hot. And do we have video out? And there we go. We do have video out. I'm going to kill that. And that will be it. That is going to conclude the repair on this 6600 XT. I will toss everything back together and put it back on the bench off camera, run it through some software and bench test everything, stress test it for a while, make sure that everything is working properly before it goes back to the customer. I've still got two more cards from this person, so hopefully I'll have some videos coming on those. Just to recap on the repair, I noticed that we were missing 5 volts on the buck converter, which was GS9230. And a few other things were not looking great on it either. We were missing some other power, but I ignored those for the moment to trace back enable because everything looked all right to me. Nothing was being pulled to ground. And in this case, not even the enable signal was being pulled to ground. So I decided to trace that back. Luckily, I had the schematic and board view, which saved me some time. I did do a visual check of the PCB in between the recording of looking at that GS and looking at the schematic and board view, but I didn't find that missing resistor, unfortunately. I think I skipped right over it, so it can be a bit difficult. There are a lot of components on these PCBs nowadays, but luckily I had that board view and the schematic that I traced that back and that showed me exactly where I had a missing resistor. I knew it wasn't like a transistor or a MOSFET because the signal wasn't being pulled to ground. We were just straight up missing it. And it in fact was that resistor that connected to the pull-up that is supposed to power this rail. We swapped that out or installed one rather. And the card is good to go. So thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time.